Do you all remember my golden 8086K? Well, of course you don't because literally nobody watched that video. Seriously, it's got like 35 views, so somebody, so please. One of the reasons why that CPU is so good is because somebody has already de the CPU by taking off the IHS and applying liquid metal directly to the die. But I have never done that. So today, we're gonna learn how to do that by ourselves, figuring it out as we go along. So I'm gonna start with this, a Intel i7-6700K that I'm going to be uh, passing off to my buddy, Jerf. And uh, <laughs> this is the toothpaste CPU from the, uh, the toothpaste video. Still kind of smells like cinnamon. So yeah, way back in the, uh, the Sandy Bridge to Ivy Bridge conversion, they uh, started using what most people refer to as Intel brand toothpaste. And it is not nearly as good as what they do nowadays where they solder the IHS directly to the die and it just works great. That's why Ryzen has been so cool this entire time. You might think it weird as somebody who uh, is trying to run a tech channel, I have never actually seen anybody do a DLED before. I've just kind of like caught random clips here and there of people doing it and never really went full on how to learn because I've kind of always run Ryzen processors. So I you know, haven't had to worry about it. But now I, I, I wanna learn and I don't wanna just go watch a video. I wanna just trial by error. I don't think it's that hard. You know, they've been doing it for quite some time now. So apparently the process involves taking a DLID tool like this one, installing the CPU in it, and then just shoving off the IHS with the tool as like a guillotine and then cleaning off the die obviously and applying some liquid metal to the die and the heat spreader. At least I think that's how that works. And then coming back over it and uh, applying some RTV to stick the IHS back on so don't move around or go anywhere. So I'm gonna bring you guys in closer so you can kind of watch this up close and uh, we can do some learning together. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and run some baselines just to see where this thing starts at because I don't wanna make it worse. <laughs> I could make it worse. I can make a lot of things worse. There it is. An i7 6700K. Not the most desirable of uh, Intel chips out there, but it still does a really good job. <laughs> so apparently we're supposed to drop it inside of this uh, DLED tool here with the resistors kind of in this exposed area so they don't get damaged. And then put this on here and tighten it until we hear something go pop. <sighs> what could possibly go wrong? Jerf, if you're watching right now, this is a good time to look away. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of pressure you gotta put on this poor thing. Oh, it does not feel good. Yeah, it's really tight on there. <laughs> it's right up against the IHS. Yeah, you got the bottom part facing down? Yeah. Okay. That's the only real concern I have with it. Maybe I wanna center it better in there so that the pressure is directly on the IHS and not kind of diagonally on it. I love that you haven't watched any, uh, any videos on how this stuff goes. You know, I've literally just heard stories. I've never actually watched a video on it. Linus even did a video on it. Well, I mean, like, you know, you, you see the DLID tool and you're like, yeah, I know exactly how that's gonna work. <laughs> that's, a, that's a break this thing off type thing. Of course I have that. I'm not stupid. Proceeds to be stupid. Oh god. Oh, there it goes. And we'll just keep going for a little while, right? To fully separate the die from the IHS. Alright. <laughs> that wasn't so bad, but it was pretty bad. And there it is. Our cute little die. Oh, it's so cute. This thing is so light without the IHS on there. The IHS is so heavy. 
This stuff is terrible. Like, look at this. It just pushes away like that. Whose idea was this? Intel. Why? Also, on here. There it is. There's your die. Oh, it's so reflective. So I just clean these things off, throw some stuff on there, put some RTV on there, and you're good to go. How hard can it be? This really does not feel good to do with an actual razor blade. <laughs> oh yeah, for anybody wondering, this CPU with a 4.4 gigahertz all core would run up to like 90 degrees C on a Prime 95 smallest FFTs, which, you know, smallest FFT, FFTs isn't really that realistic, but it still got pretty hot. I don't like doing this with this. <laughs> Trying really hard not to dig into the PCB on accident. It's like, yeah, I'm using a sharp razor blade. Man, I would really encourage anybody looking to do this to look at a different video than mine. <laughs> I mean, if I fail miserably at this, you can see what not to do. Yeah, I'm going to call that good enough. Start cleaning off the uh, the IHS itself. This doesn't feel nearly as bad because I'm just sitting here scraping the crap out of it. <laughs> We're scraper go burr. All right, that's probably good enough. Do we have some isopropyl? Of course we do. It's a sign shop. It's funny because even though we have 99%, I'm just going to use the 70% here. <laughs> All right, what do we do now? We just throw some of this stuff on there. Bing, jim jang, bing bang. Oh, yeah, I need some of that uh, nail polish. All right, so there are three little conductive spots right there. And uh, you don't want to get any liquid metal on that because apparently they short out and something happens. So. Just put some uh, nail polish on there. All right, well, I don't know if I actually need to go all the way around the die, but we're going all the way around the die because, I don't know, liquid metal's weird. It might eat stuff. Who knows? I'm qualified, guys. Hey, let's just crack open a CPU. Oh, did you follow Did you check out how to do it? Nope. Nope. I want to instill confidence in people that if I can do it without any kind of... Um, pre-educating myself that they can probably do it with you know whatever amount of uh, education that they deem necessary with a small amount of research you could probably be healthy with us yeah do the bare minimum lord knows that's all we do all right we got some uh conduct knot thermal grizzly recommended by devour and also coil line I don't think my recommendation is quite, it carries as much weight. So where, where's this stuff at? Oh, hey look, they send you, uh, they send you isopropyl wipes. Nice. I'm an idiot. Okay, so what, you just take this stuff, ooh, look, it's all shiny. Uh, and you put it on, what, this applicator looking thing? I think this applicator looking thing goes on here. Yeah, you do a very thin brushing on both surfaces. Very thin? Yeah, you, you don't want to put a ton. I'm going to put it on the IHS first because, oh, yep, a lot comes out. I hope I'm in frame. I'll get myself better in frame. Why do I know these things and you don't? Because you've been doing this longer. It's not really sticking to the IHS as much as I'd like it to. Mm. Oh, there it goes. You kind of have to, like, break the surface tension. I guess it etches. Pretty sure this is where the original thermal paste was. I mean, that looks pretty good. I think it looks good. I'm, I'm going to run with it. <laughs> I want to witness the patient before time of death. Uh, it looks thicker than it is. Yeah, that looks all right. I'm not, I'm, I'm not trusting you. I'm just doing what I do. I mean, I want people to be able to see me screw this up when I do, so. I tried sucking it back out. I didn't like sucking it back in. Stick, 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 stay, there you go. <laughs> Ooh, that's 
Oh. Screw you, Zach. <laughs> what? It's going to spread out. Uh, if it doesn't, then I'll take some off. But... There's comfort levels rising. All right, so I'm going to say that looks good enough. <laughs> it might be a lot. might be a too little. I don't know. All right, someone's going to say that this is a crap ton, but I don't even know. <laughs> Let's see if it'll autofocus on that. Looks pretty good to me. The IHS has actually quite a bit on it, so I might take some of that off. <laughs> it's really interesting to see how this stuff behaves. It's kind of frustrating. Oh, this stuff is really runny, isn't it? Yeah, it's a weird... Yeah, it's like move it around, it's running. Okay, interesting, cool. Um, I'm just gonna jam it back on there. Like, you know, this, this might be okay. It might not be okay. <laughs> we'll find out right quick if it's not okay. We'll learn from our mistakes. Got some Permatex Ultra Black. This probably looks wrong on camera. Man, I apply RTV all the time. I should be a god at this. What does RTV stand for? Room temperature vulcanizing. Do you like immediately install it in a socket so that it like centers itself? <laughs> Go ahead and drop this in a socket. <laughs> no delay here. We're, we're, we're just going right in. <laughs> I still feel like you put too much, but... <laughs> oh, it wants to move the IHS if I do it. How long do you need to let the RTV sit for? I don't know. <laughs> Gonna use the socket to hold it down. <laughs> Alright, moment of truth. <laughs> Did I kill an otherwise perfectly good CPU? We have a post. New CPU installed! Asus! Why? <laughs> It's the same CPU. It's like, oh, this one's so much spicier though. It's so much cooler though. Ooh, yeah. Uh, I gotta set up my, my overclock. It's got the same overclock still safe. Like, what are you doing? What, what, what are you doing, Asus? What are you doing? Save changes and reset. No changes were made. Exactly, because no changes were actually made. But I'm happy that it runs. I did not actually kill it yet. Wait, I'm not gonna be able to kill it if I send this to, to, to Jeff. All right, well, Jeff's, what, 9,600K? 9,600K is gonna face an untimely death. So uh, make sure you're subscribed for that. <sighs> you wanna take a guess at what it's running at? We're running smallest FFTs. It ran literally up to what, 90 something degrees, 93 degrees? Before? Uh, let's do 67. How? Okay, it's running at like 69. <laughs> I like how surprised you were. <laughs> How'd you get so close though? Uh, I don't know. Oh, so it hit 70. Experience? <laughs> I got nothing. I could probably turn up the fan speed to like, you know, max, but it's. You know, it's not the point. <laughs> no, it's going to target like 70. Yeah, it's going to target around 70. Yeah, you're right. It's getting 71. Let me just let it run for a couple minutes here. I mean, 71 is still vastly better <laughs> than 90. Man, this runs way better without toothpaste on it. <laughs> is it time for more? <laughs> more what? More hertz. I really wanted to hit 5 gigahertz on this, this CPU. Yeah, it's not easy. Apparently. Stop all workers. See how fast it drops back down. And we're already back to, to 37, 35. Yeah. Literally as soon as it stops, it drops right back down to 33C. 30, it's down 30. Is it gonna drop below 30? It's at 29. <laughs> it idles at 29C. What is the room temperature in here? 25C, 24C. That's the coldest core anyway. Yeah, 20. We have, we have cores getting down to like 23 C. This thing is running so cool. We're only using a Hyper 212. Like we're not throwing some crazy Assassin 3 at this. Like I expect Jeff to be running something probably better than this, an AIO of some sort. So this thing's gonna be running ice cold. Zach, I didn't kill it. We did it. We did it, Reddit. This is fun.
I like this. I want to know look about all the things, Zax. I don't know. All right, well, that's going to do it for today, guys. Uh, that was really impressive. Uh, being able to drop 20 degrees is a absolutely massive amount. And uh, we were able to get it up to like 4.9 gigahertz. It would even boot at 5 gigahertz, which before it would barely even muster like 4.7. So really impressive gains. If you have anything before a ninth gen and after a second gen, this is definitely something you should try. And like, I had no prior experience with this. Like I've seen some like random clips on a gamers Nexus video where he like just spreads it around. And I'm like, I can do that. I mean, it's a little stressful, but the, the gains, the gains. So if you have anything you wanna see us just dump some liquid metal onto, go ahead and leave a comment on that. If you like this, if you learned something, you know, like it and uh, subscribe for some more nonsense and, you know, have a great day. That was so much fun. I'm just happy you didn't kill it. Why would you think I would kill it? Because I've met you. Fair point. <laughs>